Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining this video. This is the second in the Rustic Backup series. Um, the first one was a high level summary of how to use Rustic as a backup software within a Linux operating system. You can do it within Windows, although um, I haven't reached that video, those videos in the series. Uh, I will be focusing on Linux for the most part, specifically on Ubuntu, but this is not all that different between the different architectures in Linux, the popular ones at least. Um, in that first video, uh, we did a proof of concept from a Rustic, server, a Rustic um, application on one server where it was just copying to local storage. Now that local storage could have been a different mount point, it could have been um, I, it could have been within the same partitions, it, it, just to show that you can have a repository with various snapshots. Um, and that's all fine and dandy, but the real power with REST that comes in with its versatility to back up to other locations. Um, popular ones, and, I th and the ones that I'm highlighting in these videos are S3 and SFTP. It can do other ones, although uh, for the scope of this video, and just to do what is most common or what would be most likely done um, I'm going to keep this to just these two or sorry these three um, today I'm going to be focusing specifically on how to back up to an SFTP storage uh, in the following video I will likely be doing S3 um, it's a little more complicated to start at the beginning but once you get it going it's really not much different so um, let's go ahead and dive into this now so <clears throat> Um, as you can see here, I have the summary document that uh, I used in the original video. You're more than welcome to download this. I'll have the reference to this in, um, in the video description. And um, I'm also going to, um, I also want to uh, make sure that everyone remembers or understands that in order for SFTP to work properly with Rustic, a, pre a prerequisite is you need to have an SSH key shared between both machines. I will be adding a video, a link to a video I did recently which describes how to do that. And um, I'm not gonna show how that's done in this video just to uh, make this scope a lot more narrow. Uh, but definitely go, do go watch that video so it shows you how to do that. Uh, in essence, what it means, what it will have you do is create a key pair on this guy, take the public key, Put it on this guy, and you should be able to log in back and uh, from this guy to here without a password. And that comes in very useful um, with applications such as Rustic. And it's just it's more it's actually more secure than a password. Um, but you can watch that video to get more details on that. Anyways, so um, just gonna I'm just gonna clear. Oh, I'm gonna clear these just so we can start from a, a fresh screen here. So here are my two different boxes. Okay, this is going to be my client. So this guy here, this is going to be the uh, the SFTP server, which is this guy right here, um, down here. So if we go, um, so this is my client. So this is my um, my server. So if I go to this IP using the user I have their SSH test, and these these Linux machines were used for other videos, but you know it doesn't matter. So I go here. It'll log in without a password, okay? And that's where that pass passwordless authentication comes in. Uh, it doesn't mean there's no password on the server. It just means that we're using a key. Um, okay. So that being said, now that means I can move on to the next part in this document here, um, which is we have to initialize the SFTP repository. Um, now, if you guys remember the original video, when I did that, I used this command here, okay? And the reason why um, you do this is so that Rustic can keep a repository of all the different snapshots and it can reference them when need be. So let's, let's look at how different, uh, it's a little different with an SFTP. So if we do Rustic, and I do have Rustic installed, yes I do. Rustic init-r for the repository. And whereas I would have gone to a local path, I now have to put in the SFTP information here. So we're going to go SFTP colon and then the user SSH test at 
if I could if I can type 182.168.110.46. Okay, and then it wants me to give a path. So in my case, um, it's easier for the purpose of this video, and um, you could you could theoretically do this. Although you could give it another path. I'm going to go to the home directory. So home of the user I, I'm 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 connecting to SSH test. And then I'm going to call it backup. Okay, um, I'm going to make sure that that exists on here. So if you look, I'm in home SSH test. I did the PWD to see where I am. I'm going to do. I'm going to create that directory MKDIR backup. So now let's see if I there it is. Okay, with the LS I can see it there. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter here, and I have to give this repository a password. So I'm going to type test test again and it's got to do its thing there we go so it's created so if I look on here now we have the restic repository set up and ready to go um, these are all the default um, and and all the directories that you would need um, within restic to, uh, to to work properly all right, and that's that first part of this document I was showing you. If I go to the next one to back up, it's a, the only difference really is the path. All right, if you look at the path, it's now a little different than on here because now we're pointing to an SFTP server. I created a dummy file here, a sample file right here. It's a it's a big chunky file. Um, I can show you guys how to do that. I just use DD to, to just create a, a, a file with random bytes in it. Um, I'm curious. I, I don't know how it'll compress because I don't remember if DD does random bits when it does that or if it just fills it with zeros and ones, which might make it very compressible. Um, anyways, so that's beside the point here. So if we do rustic and uh, now I put here password file so that we can automate this. Um, I will do this in a moment, but I'm, uh, first I'm gonna do it manually. So dash R, SFTP, and then SSH test at 192.168.110.46. And then if you guys remember the path, home SSH test backup. And I'm gonna do verbose so we can see what it's doing. And now what file do we want to back up? So back up, we're going to do sample file. Now, I'm doing it like this because I'm in that directory already. If I'm trying to back up a, a file from a different directory, I'd have to put the full path. So I'd have to do something like home, SSH test, and then sample file. So I'll go ahead and press enter. Oh, I... Uh, Type something there. So now the password test, and it should it'll go off to the races. There it goes. So it's copying that file over at this point. And I could add multiple files to this path here. Path here. So I could do, for example, Etsy password file. This has all the list of all the users. And if I want to do SSH, sorry, Etsy shadow for all the passwords and Etsy group, I can do all those test and it's doing its thing and there we go so um, that's in essence how you do it so now let me show you guys how to make this a little more automated in other words um, oh and I'll, I see why I, I, I'm not a, a root admin so I can't uh, I can't I, I'm not logged I don't have pseudo privileges right now so um, I'll do local files so I could do um, dot ssh which is a directory dot config no i don't have it on here okay that's fine so let me just do this one more time it'll back up all those files in that directory okay now if i want to um if i want to now make this a little more automated i want to create a password file on this guy with the password for the repository of Rustic. So if you saw, if you remember here, I'm just doing this again, see it asks me to enter the password. That works well if you're doing it manually, but you know, the purpose of this is you want to automate this. 
Um, so this isn't going to work well for you in an automated fashion. So we have to create a password file. So um, I'm a fan of VI, but I'm going to do nano and I'm going to call it um, uh, rustic password text. Okay. And if you guys remember the password that I was using for the repository is just test. So I'm just going to put that in there. And to exit nano, it's control X and it's asking you, are you sure you want to save this? Yes. And enter. Now, if I open that file, there's the password. You can make that password whatever you want. Um, ideally, you're going to want to create, you're going to want to restrict the permissions on this password file. Um, another trick I like to do is um, I'll put a, a dot be, uh, before the, the, pass, the, the name of the file. Um, and I'll show you why in a moment here. So if you see here, we see rustic password. If I change that to uh, dot, um, sorry, rustic to dot rustic password, um, you don't see the file unless you do an ls space dash al, which makes it a, it's basically a, a hidden, it's a hidden file is essentially what it is. It's the same thing, it's just another way to make it a little more obscure for people to that might be navigating your system. I mean, someone could catch it, but it just makes it a little more difficult. Anyways, that's beside the point here. So let's go ahead and use this file to automate this a little more. So we're going to do rustic dash dash password file. And now we got to go to the path. Okay. Um, I'm in the same directory, but let's say that I wasn't. Then I could do home SSH test. And if you guys remember, it was rustic password dot text dash r sftp, and then it's um, ssh test is the user at one nine two dot one six eight dot one one ten dot four six, and this would be the IP of your NAS wherever it happens to be. Now the path home ssh test, and it's backup. Okay, and I'd like to do verbose so I can see what it's doing. And our backup files are going to be the sample file and we're gonna do .ssh and uh, why not, let's do .local. Okay, now, uh, did I type that incorrectly? Unknown command, sample file, oh, hold on. Oh, I know why. I forgot to put it back up in here. Sample file dot SSH dot local. Not following my own files. See, as you can see now, because we use the the password file, it didn't ask me for the repository. It just went ahead and did it. Um, so what you would, th there's, I guess, two different ways I can think of off the top of my head that would make it easier for you to do this then is just to create a cron job with this entire thing right here and it'll just do it at the scheduled time that you uh, request it. Or um, you can make this a little more complex and have say a script that would, uh, be, ex that would be kicked off by cron um, and it would send you a report as well uh, of the results. So because if I do now, uh, let me change this part here to snapshots. Um, uh, did I do that properly? That's forgetting less snapshots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did I do this properly? Oh, here we go. That's, I had the verbose in there. Snapshots. Okay. See, so as you can see, if you remember the original video as well, um, when you do the snapshots, it shows you all the backups you've done, the different paths you've done. And the dates okay um, so as you can see I've done this a few times and the first one had one file and then all the subsequent ones had a few other ones I know it shows these files in here but um, the only ones I'd be able to copy really would be I think the um, past file and the group I don't think I could take the shadow because this user didn't have pseudo privileges but that's beside the point and, and, and outside of scope of this video um, <clears throat> so in essence this is how you would do a backup using rustic to an sftp server um, all the other commands 
stay the same. So if you want to validate a snapshot, um, you would use the beginning of this, so the restic password file. This is the password file. The repository is now an SFTP repository. But this part here is where you change it. So if I do a check, it checks it. No errors are found. It's no different than when you did in local storage. Um, if you want to list the contents, you would use the snapshot ID, which would be one of these guys right here. Um, and then um, the path of repository. So all the other commands that I have in here don't change. And if you want to, um, if you want to look at uh, the manual for Rustic, it's very comprehensive and has a lot more options that I have here. These are the condensed ones that I thought might be useful. I may add a few more to this document as uh, these this video series goes on. Um, but um, that, in essence, is how you would do it to a um, Rustic, uh, Rustic server using SFTP. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we are going to be looking to do one more video. I'm hoping to get it out before the end of the year, and that's just for the S3. Um, it's not more it's not technically more complicated to execute um, the complexity comes in with setting up the s3 storage um, there's a lot of storage providers out there that you can use um, i haven't decided which one i want to do yet so uh, hang on tight for those videos and uh, um, we will uh, put those out there and i'm hoping to see people's response to those thank you very much and have yourselves a good day